Hi guys and welcome to today's video. Now today uh, we're going to take a look at part 2 of 2 um, in the Living with Q6600 series. Um, now if you want to take a look up how, um, I will link last week's video which is pretty much critical to this week's video. So if you haven't watched that one, go watch that first, then come watch this one. Um, so. All those things aside, uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to go over and do uh, my month-long review. Um, so basically, I've been using the system for a month, and now we're going to review it, and basically see, is this platform really worth doing? Um, so let's go ahead and look at it. Alright guys, we're going to take a look at five key areas today. So the first is going to be overclocking, the second will be gaming, the third will be workstation use, the fourth will be video editing, and the fifth will be just kind of the general feel, the noise, and just how the system feels as a whole to use. Alright, so the first one's overclocking. Um, how did it overclock? Well, it really wasn't much more advancement from the first video. Um, so I started to get a little bit extreme in taking out RAM sticks, running it at 4 gig, running it at 6 gig, um, seeing what I could achieve on benchmarks and overclocks and these different things. Um, and reality was the limit was. 333 megahertz front side bus. Um, it was limited by the motherboard. Um, I could not achieve anything higher than that that was stable. Um, Windows would crash in the benchmarks. Um, and that's quite unfortunate, but it also tells me that the processor itself would be much stronger in, say, a X38 or a P35 or a P45 or X48 motherboard. Um, and the reason for that is these are newer chipsets that did support like stupidly high front side buses above 400 megahertz, which is what you need for the higher overclocks. So worth noting that. Uh, moving on to gaming, I guess. So with with gaming uh, as a whole, um, I did install Windows 7. I retested the benchmarks, um, but I won't waste your time on running the numbers because they turned out exactly the same with a difference of maybe one or two frames, positive or negative. So. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to string any more game performance out of it in the benchmarks. So my next step from there was to go, okay, um, I felt in some of the benchmarks that it couldn't run at 1080p, you know, kind of that, that minimum 30 frames a second where it kind of feels okay. Um, so with that in mind, I went, all right, let's tweak these settings at 1080p and see what we can achieve. Now, the good news is um, games like Fallout 4 and that, which had a little bit of stutter, if I bump those settings up to down to, say, a medium or a low setting, um, it ran perfectly at 1080p. So um, for F1 2015, as well, I was able to get to run between 40 and 60 frames at medium at 1080, which was nice. Uh, overall, just 1080p gaming on this system, if you are willing to take a bit of a sacrifice in the settings, it will do it. Um, so the third one I mentioned was workstation use. Now with workstation use, it's still pretty good. Um, there's no limitations to it. I mean, I'm running three monitors as you can, as you can see. This is the Q6600 system running right now in the background here. Um, so for example, like I would load up say Chrome. Uh, yeah, it, it loads, I go to YouTube, whatever. It's happy, it doesn't care, right? Um, I can still string it up with a bunch of tabs and all this different stuff. So as a workstation, it's great. There's no problems. The fourth one was video editing, and this is where it starts to fall apart of just a little bit. So um, the example was, I think it was the last video that I did, the, the part one to this series. Um, that was a roughly 12 minute video, and unfortunately, um, in the timeline, it ran okay. Um, if I had any effects, like lighting effects and that sort of stuff, which I have to run currently because my current camera is not that fantastic, um, the CPU struggles when I'm scrubbing through the timeline, so it'll stutter and things like that. Um, and then the real kicker was when I went to render that video. Um, so that 12 minute video took roughly 45 to 50 minutes to render, which is, for those of you who don't know, that's actually quite long and quite ridiculous. Um, if I was to run that on, say, a third gen i5 or any sort of modern system that's a quad core, it would munch through it in at least 20 minutes or less. Um, to put that in perspective, I pull out the Alienware, I render the same video, it's under 20 minutes. Um, so, not awesome at video editing, but it can do it. So, that, that's worth noting. And just as a side note, as well, to really kind of see if I could really break the system, I went, alright, let's try some Twitch streaming. Um, and unfortunately, it was pretty stuttery. Um, no matter what game I ran, I ran 
everything from uh, uh, Doom, uh, the modern Doom. Um, I tried Fallout 4, I tried um, GTA 5, um, and then none of those would stream properly, and I went, okay, uh, let's try an older game like the original Doom 3. Um, and unfortunately, even that still had some stuttering. Um, so overall, the platform is just don't try streaming games on it, which is probably an expectation that most people won't have. So I think we're okay in that regard. And finally, noise and feel and that sort of stuff. Overall, it's pretty bulky as a system. Um, now that's in part because of the case, but it's also worth remembering that I need that case because it's an ATX motherboard. Um, so the thing about the 775 platform, which is something that we've forgotten um, as an IT community, if you wanted to extract the maximum performance on this platform, nine out of 10 times you'd have to run an ATX board. If you want to run a micro ATX or smaller, um, you're going to really struggle to find that second hand part that's going to match the performance of an ATX board. So it's really worth remembering that. So as a result, things like noise levels um, under load or even just sitting here, like when I do the editing for this video, I'm going to have to edit out that fan noise that will be showing up in the microphone. Um, so yeah, I mean, overall noise is not fantastic. In terms of just overall feel of the system, it does kind of start to feel like a 10 year old system at times. Um, and generally I find myself going, you know what, I wish I had more horsepower. But, this is a big but. All things considered, I am a power user. Um, I do become disappointed in using my Alienware at times, um, which is not a bad laptop. It's a very high-end laptop, even by today's standards. Um, it's only a year old, so um, I'm disappointed in that. So I, I, I'm just a power user. I'm a bit of a snob when it comes to IT. So what's the bottom line here? Well, basically, don't buy this processor if you're wanting high-end performance and you can shell out $1,000 for a new system. That's the bottom line. But what that means is if you have $200 or $300 or you're building a first system or you're building a system for grandma or, I don't know, for your 12-year-old brother that's never had a computer, go nuts. It's a great platform. Um, it is maybe only going to have another year or two of usefulness and then it'll start to sort of just not be able to keep up with the AAA titles and different things like that. So bear in mind that this system, this platform is on its last legs, but for the price that you will pay, you can't build a new system that can do what this does. You can't even build a new system for the price that you would be able to build this for. So thanks for watching guys. Um, I hope this has helped. Um, it's not really a kind of feature video like the last couple of ones I've done. It's more of just a follow up video for most of the subscribers, which I'm thankful for. Um, so thanks for watching guys. Like this one if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. Um, get subscribed if you're not subscribed already. Um, I'm going to be looking at releasing Ryzen content within the next few weeks. Um, so I've almost got the cash together to get that system and I hope to bring you awesome Ryzen content soon. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.